commencing operation authorization as in the following podcast is only authorized for decepticons if you are tuning in to this broadcast and we discover you are not a decepticon congratulations turn off the podcast and meet up on upper north megatronish street in the dark alley next to the recycle plant in kaon alone for your reward now for the rest of you let us continue the show Hello and welcome to the podcast where we are currently recapping the events of Transformers IDW 2005 continuity. I'm Alex Prime with my coo- with my coo- with my two co-hosts here. Hi, I'm Computron. Hi, I'm Kilobyte. Moving on with our comic book discussion today takes us to IDW Transformers Robots in Disguise Volume 7. And as always, spoiler warning because there's some spoilers. I ain't gonna say it again. It's a spoiler. <laughs> I'll, I'll say it again spoilers so if you haven't read this already we highly recommend you go back then come listen to the podcast now onwards uh okay uh yeah so time for some fun facts buckle your seat buckaroo uh anyway uh so there are a total of six comics for this volume uh issue 33 was released september 24th 2014 and the last issue of the volume 38 came out march 4th 2015 the writer was John Barber, and the artists were Saren Stone, Livio Remondelli, Josh Perez, Andrew Griffith, Brendan Cowhill, with colors by Josh Perez and Joanna LaFuente, and Thomas Deere. Nice. Okay, time for some trivia. So, in issue 34, the image of the Enigma landing on Earth depicts a group of bone-wielding apes, along with the caption, The Dawn of Man. This is likely a nod to the opening of 2001 A Space Odyssey, which used the same title for its opening prologue and featured very similar hominids. We would later learn that the Enigma was an intelligent boosting effect on early humans, not unlike the famous alien monoliths from the movie. Dun, dun, dun. You're welcome, humans. What? I need to go rewatch that movie now. Thank you. <laughs> uh, in issue 36, Uruk... Uh, is a real city. <laughs> I thought that was an orc from Lord of the Rings. Uh, <laughs> it was one of the first c- cities in recorded human history and lends its name to the period of history that denotes the emergence of urban civilization. In issue 37, also in Black Rock's trophy room, is a car based on the Decepticon Slicer, who has not appeared in IDW's continuity yet, in one resembling a Ford Model T and is rather evocative of the all-spark mutation seen in John Barber's earlier Sector 7 uh, miniseries set in a live-action movie continuity. We won't talk about that here. We don't talk about it, then. We don't talk about... We don't talk about Bruno? Is that the new song? No. No copyrights. Yeah, no, no. Can't do that. (laughs) Also, here's the last one. It's actually the most interesting. Most important. Most important. The most important one, by subscribing to our YouTube channel or following us on social media platforms, you are helping us keep the lights on at Swerves. Can't believe we're having to pay that bill. Uh, but we don't own this bar. We just buy Enjix here. Ah, uh, hush. I've learned that this is through watching Ert YouTube. It's what all the tubers say, shall we say. Tubers? I'm not sure that's what they're called. Anyway, <laughs> Mr. Kilobit, do you mind giving us a short summary of these comics? Will do. And just like uh, More Than Meets the Eye, the R.A.D. volumes, the Robots in Disguise volumes have uh, some different storylines happening at the same time. So there'll be a couple of different summaries. And we're going to start off with Repaired and Reactivated. Wheeljack is faced with a Cybertron unfamiliar to him and must decide where his loyalties lie in this new world. Beautiful art. Yes. Alpha Trion reveals the story of Cybertron's past the fall of the 13 primes, the rise of Nova, and the quest to unlock the Enigma of Combination. Interesting. Very good. Uh, finally, Spike but Wiki makes a dramatic return. Oh, boy. And with Optimus <laughs> Prime away, Prowl sees an opportunity to settle an old grudge against 
the humans. Of course. <laughs> and this week's episode, we're giving a shout out to High Beam TF. Thank you so much. You are fantastic. Yeah, thank you. And as always, this information has been taken from the wiki. Wait, you took High Beam TF from the wiki? The the information of the summaries. Oh, that makes sense. That what was I thinking? <laughs> All right, are we ready? He has a wiki. Uh, we're ready. <laughs> There's a wiki. <laughs> of course, you wouldn't know Computron. Of course. Oh, <laughs> we start off back on Cybertron, upside down in a vat. Wheeljack is back, baby. Am I using that phrase correctly? And I think so. I am enjoying. Starscream is the most excited about this situation. Everyone's just like, "What is going on?" Like even Who's this guy? not even excited <laughs> being alive still. It's just Starscream's like, yes, my only friend. And you're just like heartwarming, but you're also like, where's the catch? And we find out what that catch is. He wants Wheeljack to build a combiner or not necessarily build one. Fix an existing combiner that was formerly known as Superion. What are our thoughts? I'm not surprised Starscream is trying to uh, kind of like keep control of his so-called empire uh, by having a massive bot under his control so he can squish anybody that tries to you know go against him well, there was that and i think he was also trying to fix like omega supreme too yeah yeah <laughs> he wants all the big bots yeah. all the big bots so there's some scenes here later where will jack eventually comes back to starscream and finds him talking to himself starscream that is talking to himself he looks like he's talking to a wall or something. Kilo, first time <laughs> reading this, what are your thoughts? Uh, I found it, I kind of was in the same part with the uh, with the characters in the story where they were like, he's probably just gone nuts. <laughs> just lost some bolts and, lost you know, his marbles. And this time, yeah, so he's talking to himself. Uh, but I also was like, maybe they're something else that we're not they're not showing to me right now uh, so it was kind of like a 50 50 it's like maybe he's crazy and maybe you know there might be something else right and they play a little along with that because there's one scene where you think he's talking to himself but he's actually talking to someone on comms right and then yes. in another scene he is talking to a wall and it's just yeah. like what is going on the first one because i think even will jack said that he wasn't picking up any frequencies yep yeah yeah Yep, interesting. I wonder what's going on with all screamers. Let's check in on Optimus and Gang, shall we? Who wants to start here first? The one where Optimus and Trion are talking on the moon. Uh, I, oh, boy. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. What do you love That's about a long it? story. <laughs> um, I love it because it gives us a very, very good backstory. I love it. Yeah, describe it for me. Your details so are what we learned. What we learned was is in the very ancient Cybertronian, I believe, or Cybertron, I believe. Yep, they're in the first uh, Civil War. 10 million years ago is what they said? Yes. The first Civil War consi uh, uh, consisted of 13 tribes, correct? Yep. Uh, and each yes. tribe had their leader named a prime. There was Onyx Prime in charge of the Maximals. There was Leo. I don't know why Liege Maximo. You bet no. your tail bite. Uh, Liege Maximo. Uh, and then you had. Um, oh gosh, who was the one that was the head of the Headmasters? Nexus. Uh, Nexus. Was it Nexus? Yes. Nexus Prime. I think it's Nexus. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, and they were at war. And I believe uh, we we're kind of tossed into. Um, uh, Nexus and uh, Onyx Prime grouping up, not you, Onyx. Onyx Prime <laughs> grouping up uh, to go to war at the uh, what was the name of the palace? Uh, the Golden Palace. Uh, the the no no it's not the Crucible. It's the the Cit Citadel of Light. The Citadel yeah. of Light. They were invading the Citadel of Light, and the Citadel's only lights, only defense was whom? Nova and. It was uh, at the time. It was just Nova because his partner died at this, uh, like as oh, soon true, as true. they landed. Right. And then, but I think the one you're hinting at is Galvatron joins forces with him. Ancient last Warlord person you would expect. Galvatron. Yeah, but yes, it kind of establishes their friendship. Why they were friends in during the Dark Cybertron events, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I believe it was stated at the time that, or Galvatron was stating, let me let me rephrase that. Galvatron was stating at the time that he followed no prime, but that wasn't true, was it? It was not. <laughs> I believe at the time it was uh, stated that he was, well, that he was with that quote traveler, 
Who's the traveler? Who's the traveler indeed? And uh, yeah. you want me to say it? I feel like someone's going to tell us right now. <laughs> it's my turn uh, to ask I questions. <laughs> I, I guess I'll say it. It's uh, Alpha Trion. Dun, dun, and, dun. What a twist. And he, he says he's the last prime on that world that they're currently in. Yeah, yeah. he was the last original prime is what he said. Yep. Yeah. What are our thoughts to this revelation? Um, uh, why Alpha Trion would, you know, hire or, you know, work together with Galvatron, I have no idea. I do but... wish I could see more of Onyx Prime and his Maximals. Me too. <laughs> Me too. They, 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 they mentioned, and that's it. You don't really see Onyx. And talking about Onyx. Yeah. How's it going? Onyx. You were a bad guy? I don't remember. Oh, I mean, it was a civil war. I mean, everybody has their own. Because there's like a 13-way civil war. It wasn't a long yeah. civil yeah. war. Well, some of them had alliances like Prima, Solus, Alchemist, well, and Onyx, and, stuff. and but, yeah. Well, Onyx, I, it was a little complicated back then. Uh, but I don't remember too much about it. I, I do. Remember. Convenient. Yeah. yeah. Spoilers. <laughs> Kill spoilers. Thoughts on the Galvatron versus Nexus Prime scene that we see here. And I want to point out, this establishes uh, why Galvatron hates combiners. It allows the merging of beast formers to the quote-unquote purity of Cybertronians. Uh, don't don't be like that, kids. Anyway, don't don't be like Galvatron is what I'm saying. Don't, <laughs> it, it, I, I need to classify. Really interesting. It's really interesting, <laughs> right? Because... It kind of it kind of double dips on the idea that and, you know we read this earlier that uh, Galvatron believes the pure race is pure Cybertronian and nothing but actual Cybertronian, and yep. um, we'll we'll discover later he's he's pro functionist functionalist should I say yep. him and uh, Nova. So I'm gonna yep. let you guys go with that. And one. what's interesting, I want to draw a little parallel here, is there's this cartoon earth show called steven universe and there's a character in there that <laughs> goes by the name jasper who also hates uh in this in this case combiners two gems forming a new gem well specifically two different gems forming to make a new one they only want pure gems to come combine with pure gems quote unquote on that um yeah so that is just a comparison i also have this weird um if I don't remember correctly, but we had a flashback when Jahaxis made, not in this comic, in a previous volume, where Jahaxis made Monstructor. Do we remember what Galvatron's response was to that? No, I can the tell past, you no. he didn't. like Because in this comics, you can tell that Galvatron hated Jahaxis right off the bat. Fair right? enough. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and this one they do... Give us the percent the the what Galvatron doesn't like about it, uh, cool. but in the ba in the past it was just you know Monstructor appeared and then he just went on with Nova and then they disappeared into the universe. Yeah. Hey. Anyway, that was a sidebar. There's some eavesdropping on Optimus and Trion's secret conversation. Computron, do you mind telling us how and who is listening in? Um. So. Prowl's listening into their conversation, and um, Optimus said that he needed to. Uh, I'm getting my timelines mixed up. Was this when he said he needed to go back to Cybertron, to yeah, around the almost around the same yeah, time? Yeah, I believe he was telling Alpha Trion that he needs to head back to Cy Cybertron, and then uh, Alpha Trion said that he trusted Optimus to be confidential with this, and to not tell Prowl. And Optimus, I believe, said that. He was, it wouldn't matter. He would tell Prowl if Prowl asked. And Prowl's like, Of course you would tell me. Why wouldn't you tell me? Because he's spying in on Optimus. And what's um, interesting, and the thing he never was, eventually does. <laughs> yeah, he never does. But the, the thing, I, I'm sorry, I, I'm kind of going around the point here. The thing that uh, Alpha Trion's trusting Optimus not to tell Prowl is that the Enigma is on planet Earth. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Alpha Trion has a. Uh... His priority straight worth not trusting Prowl because Prowl has been doing some shady work recently, so it's understandable. Only just a bit. He's he's been <laughs> on the prowl lately, and uh, <laughs> it's not something we need to leave him 
alone for a little bit. Anyway, let's switch gears to Earth and focusing mainly on Garrison Blackrock, a rising new character in the series, talking about his new product, the Onyx Interface. Yeah, perfect name. Onyx again? Yeah. <laughs> Illuminati confirmed. What can <laughs> you tell me about this, Kilo? Like, this character, for me, as we continue on with this series and know more about Garrison Blackrock, reminds me, or when I read his voice lines, I hear uh, Varric from the Korra series, the Avatar one. <laughs> like, yeah. that's who I hear when I read his voice. And, like, this personality is kind of like a combination of the Earth, Merker, Zuckerberg. I think that, I don't know. It's weird. Or the Stave Jobs. Or the, why, why would you Bill Gates? Abby Jobs. Bile Gates? Yeah. Is that Bile He's like, Gates? Bile, something like that. He's <laughs> like uh, all these combined. Is he a combiner? Kilo, do humans combine? Uh, uh, through my research, I don't think they can combine. We can stack yeah. them though, right? Is that the same thing? You can stack them, but then it won't won't do. It won't be as structural safe as actually combining. Okay, sorry, I got us so derailed. I, I do not recommend. <laughs> uh, well, for me, I got a vibe of Tony Stark. Oh, I wasn't getting uh, that at all. At, at the beginning, Tony Stark's you know creates guns and he sells them to bad people and then eventually he does become iron man and sees his mistakes so in this one he's like hey i'm doing all of this and then as we learn on it's more you know he, he'll get more out of it than what he's really telling so it just gave me kind of like a like a tony stark at the beginning but then this one just keeps going into dark uh a dark path and not really becoming a hero at all Computron, you want to talk about it uh, there was one thing I want to talk about, which was the robot that uh, Wiki was chasing, because he, he's like, "Oh come Spike. on, G, don't do me like that." <laughs> who, who I, I know, was and Wiki kills yeah. him, but it was like the, one of the best characters that they created. Yeah. <laughs> that poor guy. <laughs> it was a Constructicon too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> come on, G, poor. don't do me like that. <laughs> Speaking of poor things, we get some more Optimus and Prowl tension back on the arc, which when I say poor things, I mean poor table. We have another table flip from Prowl. So whatever our counter up, let's uh, add one to it and move on from there. Any thoughts? <laughs> poor table. Uh, poor table indeed. <laughs> when in doubt, flip a table. <laughs> yeah, flip a table. Speaking of table flips, actually not speaking of table flips, let's do something else, shall we? Uh, let's take a quick ad break. Let's play Who's That Bot? Welcome to McAdams Old Oil House, a mutual bar where you can drink your worries away and have a good time. My name's Clickbait, and I'll be your waiter. Wow, this place is amazing. There's all kinds of life here. Is that... is that Devoid? It sure is. And over there, you can see Megatron and Optimus arm wrestling. Again. Oh, neat. Here's our menu. On tap, we have the- Your motherboard was a toaster. Yeah, well, we'll eat a chair. There will be no fighting in my bar. <clears throat> On tap, we have the finest NGX and the most exquisite polonium spritzer. Do you have any, uh, non-mechanical food-like items? Such as... Chains? <clears throat> I mean, do you have any, uh, maybe sushi or some chocolate milk? Of course we do! Because we at McAdams Old Oil House treat every guest like family. Why choose anywhere else? Uh, was that last question for me? Oh, oh, you're looking at a camera. Wait, is this an app? It's Rodimus and Telgate! back so that was a nice refresher of an ad break we got some new drinks computron we doubled your drink because we are assuming swerve is diluting them so enjoy so Thoughts? if you double it is it one fourth or is it i no i'm, I'm not You're gonna do math right numbers so. yeah we're not doing <laughs> math. yeah you're supposed to be the the computron anyway thoughts on scoop switching sides and joining galvatron we finally get a, a payoff of uh, Scoop leaving Cybertron and showing up on Earth. You know the scoop, uh, the scoop, the, the Scoopy Scoop. 
Scoop that tried to blackmail uh, Starscream Scoop? Starscream. Yeah. I don't think he was blackmailing Starscream. I think he was actually helping Shockwave for some reason. Well, apparently, whatever but it is, he ain't done. Speaking of Shockwave, mm-hmm. Kilo, we find out through Galvatron that the entire Chosen One theories, not theories, um, was it? What was that thing where someone makes up a prophecy? Oh, that's the word, prophecy. Uh, the Chosen One prophecy was made up by Alchemist Prime. Oh, huh. very interesting. Interesting. What are your thoughts on that? But how? Mm. But how indeed? Uh, yeah. Luckily, somebody's called Starscream. Even though the, was it a prophecy or Stars set will up? scream. <laughs> prophecy or set of Computron spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully hopefully we'll see all the prime soon yeah if that happens but uh i'm kind of i'm not surprised that he switched sides because stars can really treat him badly especially incarcerating him for something he didn't do yeah that's an understatement so yeah i kind of understand what he's doing or like why he's doing it yeah he, he scooped up some some new friends mm. so yes, he's it seems new scoop. Yeah, so it seems Spite <laughs> w- Wiki might be a person of interest as Prowl plus the Constructicons are after him since Optimus left for Cybertron, leaving Prowl sort of in command? It's well, hard to say. That is a bad idea. Yeah. Of course and, he wants revenge, right? Yeah, and also Galvatron is after him as well. Gotta finish off that family lineage that he started <laughs> earlier. <laughs> what are your thoughts on this chase? It's not necessarily... Uh, yeah. It's not very subtle. No, it's not subtle at all. <laughs> I like how it kind of... You wouldn't expect Prowl to do this, but you, you knew that Spike killed a Constructicon, right? And it's just yeah. like, now Prowl wants revenge. I'm like, okay. Is this revenge for the Constructicon, or is this because you got duped by him last time? I think it's because he got duped. And then I think Constructicons oh. are kind of... Because the, sc- the Constructicons were in Prowl's head, right? And they were up, clearly upset that Spike killed him. Another one. Of course, but for Prowl, that was just another Decepticon at the time, right? So right, but I don't think they're, he's... they're uh, okay. I'm not gonna spoil it. Prowl, <laughs> Prowl's after Spike because Spike lied. Yeah, that's that's his main motive, which is less of a uh, a reason to kill him than the Constructor Con ones, but it's still there, right? Heck of a grudge, yeah. man. Heck of a grudge. I enjoy hit Prowl just. Going straight after Spike, and as soon as Spike realizes Prowl's there, he makes like the off comments, like, "Hey, you put on a few pounds, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or you've been juicing." <laughs> yeah, because he has the, the the Humvee mode now, so yeah. he's a little bit bigger. He's definitely. I, like bulky. I do like the the bikes that uh, Rumble and Frenzy turn into. Does look pretty cool. Yes, uh, that's one of my favorite chase scenes here because it's so obvious that. Uh, they're like, oh, cool, convenient motorcycles that are all already <laughs> turned on. We can use these to get out. Totally not a trap. TN. <laughs> it's it's great. Oh, and yeah. Jimmy is back. You know, the one from the comics way, way, way back. Uh, one with uh, the guy in the wheelchair? No, no, the no. Mechanic? no. mechanic that helped Verity and uh, what, was, what was his name? Uh, Hunter. Hunter o- Onion. Mm. Yeah. Hunt. Yeah. Yes, that one. <laughs> it's been a while since yeah. we've seen him. Uh, anyway, yeah. let's check in with Thundercracker because he has graced us with his most genius screenplay once again. But we are rudely interrupted by Soundwave. And honestly, not a lot happens except he extends an offer for Thundercracker to join him. And then Thundercracker gives him a copy of the screenplay. I'm just curious, mm-hmm. when do we get our copy? Because, you know, <laughs> I really want to read it. I need the conclusion for Ken Man and Julia Woman to come to to fruition. It's, it's Josh Boyfriend. Josh Boyfriend. It's I'm sorry. Boyfriend. Yes. <laughs> Get your story were, right. Who's as I handsome there was a as movie an F-22 coming out on, on Cybertron? Yeah, eventually. But the book's always better. The book's of always, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Directed by Michael Bay. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> That's it. That's the end of the episode. Uh, have a good one. I can't. I can't today. Okay. Sorry. We're oh gonna, boy. Moving back to bike. So after a skirmish happens, eventually Prowl runs away with Spike, leaving the Constructicons behind. 
for a short bit with Galvatron. Galvatron takes RC alone for a while. They duke it out for a bit. And then they figure out like, hey, you know what? You know what? You need to be careful because there are some bad things that are going to happen later down the road. The Enigma Atomic Nation is, has some bad, terrible effects and it can make one go crazy. Take your friend Prowl, for example. And RC is just like, oh no, maybe you're right. And folks, <laughs> for those people who are listening to how Galvatron talks to RC, this is what's called propaganda. It's not necessarily <laughs> true. But in Prowl's case, uh, it might be true. But it's it's not true for everyone. Yeah. Well, they weren't made by the Enigma, right? They were made... No, they, they were weren't. forced to combine by Shockwave, so... Right. It was a force combination... There was not really a good match. Uh, it's it's an abusive relationship, really. Prowl is not necessarily kind to the Constructicons. He's not a good father. Yes, that's what we'll call it. <laughs> so, what's your thoughts on RC join eventually joining Galvatron? Uh, I found it interesting. I feel like it was, you know, to achieve her goal and kind of just keep the combination away from Prowl, which was the bigger threat at the moment. Was that a pun? And then... <laughs> not intentionally, but I'll take it. It was a very well-constructed then... <laughs> pun. I wonder... I wonder what... Uh, Galvatron and RC's relationship was like prior to this event, and I'm not going to say anything else, but... You keep <laughs> saying that. I wonder if it's setting up for something. I wonder. Spoilers. Yeah. I wonder. Spoilers! But... We did see them in Dark of Hardness, and they duped it out, and then she ran away. Yep. So we'll see where that leads. But uh, I think it was just a convenient uh, friendship absolutely. to achieve one common goal. Yeah, absolutely. On the flip side of things, uh, Spike joins Prowl. Like, eventually Prowl convinces Spike to steal the Nigma combination. And eventually, the Constructicons meet up with Prowl, and they're like, can we kill him? He's like, no, 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 he's not that bad. This <laughs> is all a lie, of course, to get the Enigma combination from Blackwall. And, well, as soon as they confirm the Enigma is at a secret base, well, Prowl decides to combine and steal it. And out loud, says Spike is just a target of opportunity. Surprise, surprise. Just like Prowl. Yeah. Surprise, surprise. Another convenient alliance. I, again, find it hilarious with Black Rocks being prepared. And it was like, I can, I have precautions. And encases the Enigma in this metal casing. But then, like, less than a panel later, Devastator has it open. And it's just like, oh, that did nothing. It didn't even slow him down. <laughs> but Kilo, what are your thoughts on the Ramjack and Thrust drone clones? Drone clones? Nice. The machination? Yeah. I thought I thought it was going to get really ugly real fast if they joined. Because then, you know, the whole planet would know the Transformers or the Cybertronians are back. Because, uh, you know, throughout all these comics, the humans have been trying to keep them a secret. And I'm like, oh, that's not going to end well. But I, I do like uh, kind of what happens with... Uh, Thundercracker intervening and kind of getting some help from a sound wave. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Any favorite scenes from this battle conflict from anyone? I, I like the first scene when uh, the, the combination of the, the Enigma is being covered by the metal plate. I like how uh, Blackrock is very calm and the whole building is just crashing around him. He's like, I have something for this. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, but if the building crashes on you, you won't really escape. <laughs> I wonder I wonder why he was so confident. Dun dun dun. Anyway. You're just full of dun, dun, dun. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Okay, here's my issue when I was reading this comic was that it's one of those ones where it's like, oh, but this happens. Oh, but this happens. Oh You activated my trap card. <laughs> it's like you're you're putting me in these positions where like I feel like if I open my mouth too much I wanna spoil. I this see, is this is definitely and when I was reading. It was like one of those comics where like it did a really excellent job of setting stuff up. But now when you're reading it through again, you're like, oh boy, this is a good <laughs> one. <laughs> so moving on, we end up with an Autobot who attempted 
not attempted, successfully stole the Enigma combination and is heading back to Cybertron during all this conflict, stealing the Decepticon ship to get there. What are our thoughts? That can't be a good thing, right? Oh, it's an excellent no. thing. No, especially, uh, you know, him having communications with Starscream. Yeah, right. what's the scoop oh. on that? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, did I, did I scoop your thunder? What? That that doesn't work. That doesn't work? You can't scoop no. thunder? No. Let's just get a big enough trowel. That thing will be a thunder magnet. Just, if you enjoyed this episode, please. Excuse <laughs> me. <laughs> All right. Is there any other things we want to touch upon before a Rod Star rating? No, uh, I like I like the Thundercracker and his uh, dog. Uh, uh, like talks and like all the scenes uh, with him interacting with the dog. Uh, I will be sad if something happens to that dog. Oh, hopefully and I'm nothing hoping does. It won't, so, hopefully but nothing I does. have a feeling that something will. So I'm well, like, that no. depends. Is it your favorite? <laughs> Don't you say it? Don't you say no. it? Don't you say it? <laughs> it's not my favorite. It's just very sweet, and I know Gosh. that when sweet moments Where, like this happen, if you enjoyed this episode, please, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sounds like we're ready for Rod Star before Computron <laughs> loses it. Rod, Computron, what's your Rod Star rating? Biting my tongue this entire one. This one is going to be a 4.5. Um, it did leave a lot of cliffhangers. By a lot, I mean a lot. Um, it, I, I'm so sorry. This is 4.5 because I didn't like the drawing in the first of all issue. Oh no! Wow. <laughs> wow. Really? Uh, I love Which one that are you talking art. about? Which one are you talking the about? The first issue, the, the one, the the pre-combiner orders one. The the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, with the, the wind blade, the wind blade with wheeljack and all oh, that. Oh man, I'm so sorry. That, that's gorgeous art, man. I just don't like cartoony comics. It's so good. Uh, all right, I'll go next. Yeah. Uh, Rod story. I'm gonna give it a uh, three and a half. I liked it. There was a lot of build up. It was a little slow in some places. And then in some places there's like a little too much dialogue or there's a little too much like, like we were joking earlier, you activated my trap guard, <laughs> like a lot of back and forth thing, which kind of slowed the pacing down. But overall, it's not bad. Not bad. Yeah, I'll, I'll give it a, a 3.5. Uh, it was, it was kind of slow. Uh, it had me intrigued because there was a lot of, you know, conflict between all the factions and especially Optimus leaving and then leaving Prowl, I'm like, okay, this is just going to go down the drain very fast. And it's, and then I had tense moments with them fighting on Earth and seeing how the humans will retaliate and then the, the machination and all that. I'm like, oh, this is going to be horrible. Somebody's going to be put offline here and it's not going to be fun. And so it's just kind of the art, the beginning art is just so good. So I gave it the 0.5. We have, we have some <laughs> conflict. But listeners, what do you think of these comics? How many Rod Stars would you give it? And let us know by leaving a comment below. Is Computron right? Is Computron wrong? Is Kilobyte yeah. right? Is Kilobyte wrong? And of course, I'm always right. Emails, we don't have any today. Wow. But if you like to get in contact with us, you can send us an email <laughs> at swordbarpodcast at gmail.com. I'm purposely ignoring Computron <laughs> and Kilo. But we are open to reading your emails here on the pod ending thoughts is the next thing uh toys do we have any new toys uh no new toys yet no new toys i got a small grimlock i think it's a grimlock from cyberverse it doesn't transform but he has a dino head and it has a little funky mechanic where if you you flip his dino head up and then he has a tail but he looks like a robot like a, a standing hand lizard if that makes sense and then if you flick his tail down his mouth opens and he looks like he's swallowing his tongue <laughs> <It's pretty. laughs> yeah so that's it that that's all it looks like a mcdonald's toys but <laughs> wow. It, it wow, does you got a mcdonald's toy it's what it looks like yeah there you go that's where this podcast is derailed to okay so before we take off uh there's one thing we'd like to say uh Kilobyte here has this frequency going out to Earth. I believe it's on this thing called a Twitch. What? You should get that checked out. 
yeah. It's not it's not that kind of Twitch. It's a website on the back on Earth called Twitch.tv, and I've started streaming. And uh, currently doing the Skywalker Saga, the new Lego game. And you can find me at Twitch.tv slash Kilobyte Prime, uh, where I'll be uh, streaming, hanging out with all of you guys, or you bots and humans alike. And um, hope to have a lot of fun. Uh, you can catch me at 8 p.m. Uh, Pacific time because that's the only time our frequency reaches Earth. And hope to have a blast. Um, <laughs> are you too excited for Transformers More Than Meets the Eye yeah. Volume 8? Yeah, of course. It's, I am. it's More Than Meets the Eye. Awesome. Eyes. Yeah. Uh, if you enjoyed this episode, consider sharing it with your friends and subscribing. If you want to help us out even further, uh, we have started a Patreon. All of the proceeds will go to supporting the show and keeping the lights on. Of course, we have some tiers that offer other forms of gratitude, such as a 3D file uh, and access to multiple, our Discord. Multiple 3D files. Multiple 3D files. And yes. access to our Discord channel. And as always, we hope you all are staying safe out there. And thank you so, so, so much for listening. Till all are one. Till all are one. Till all are one. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Swerves Bar Podcast. You can also find us on Twitter at Swerves Bar. If you are interested in more content, try checking out the spinoff D&D Transform and Rollout Rise of the World Killers. Let's tune in for a preview now. Well, it looks like we have another partner and I pick up the baby and I take it with us. The baby completely unaware of what's going on, just kind of like snuggles up against your arm and falls asleep. It makes it even worse. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Exhilarating. There is also a YouTube channel with bonus content. Link will be provided below. End transmission.